LSU football fall practice begins this week, and that means we are getting closer and closer to the 2024 season. The excitement is palpable here in Baton Rouge, but some questions and concerns are circling around this year's team, the biggest being whether Blake Baker and the new reworked defensive coaching staff will be able to improve the Tigers' game on that side of the ball after a pretty disappointing showing last year. In his recent media appearances, Coach Brian Kelly is all optimism, but fans can only wait and see. As fall practice starts, we're going to get in-depth on today's episode about what we can expect this coming season. First, we'll hear from Jeff Palermo and Todd Horn as they sit down with Jock Doucette of WAFB, followed by a discussion with Glenn West of Go 24-7. We've got a full show today, so let's get to some football. I'm your host, Jake McMains, and we'll dig in right after a message from our sponsor. July is jumping at your East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Lots of books are being read as part of their summer reading program. Adults are finding the way of nature through Tai Chi classes, while little ones gear up for back to school with enrichment programs like Big Buds and Carver Cubs. And for teens, how about Twinkie Wars, Bubble Science, or Percy Jackson Trivia? Go online at ebrpl.com to learn more. That's ebrpl.com. Breaking down the latest happenings with LSU Athletics. This is us. Hear from the coaches. We're put together a defense that puts us in a position to win the SEC. The players. Having fun and we work it, baby. That's it, man. The recruits. Yeah, show some passion and some heart. And those who cover the fighting Tigers of LSU and the SEC. All those things are going to be there, which are important. It's two hours of nonstop LSU talk. What a privilege. I mean, you get to represent LSU. Tiger Rag Radio is brought to you by Cummins. Cummins creates power solutions that the world depends on. Helm Paint and Decorating, the paint experts of Louisiana, Louisiana Beef Industry Council, Max Home, and the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Get ready to talk Tigers with producer Jackson Blackman and our hosts, Todd Horn and Jeff Palermo. Three great players that are better people than they are players. This is Tiger Rag Radio. All right, hour number two of the show. Jeff Palermo along with Tiger Rag editor Todd Horn. Jackson Blackman, our producer. Glad you could join us as uh, we are on the eve of reporting day for the LSU football team. They will hit the practice field for the first time on Thursday, and then it's a sprint, if you would, to the uh, season opener against USC in Las Vegas. Joining us now, he is the sports director for WAFB TV in Baton Rouge. Jacques Doucette joins us here on Tiger Rag Radio. Jacques, thanks a lot uh, for uh, joining us here. How you doing, my friend? Oh man, I'm doing great. I'm just disappointed that we don't get those usual, uh, you know, bo- uh, video opportunities tomorrow. Of seeing the oh, yeah. linemen carry mattresses and video games and <laughs> big know, box tvs <laughs> exactly right right yeah that used to be a big thing we go out there like at eight nine in the morning and just shoot guys carrying furniture all day right and, uh they've kind of uh discouraged doing that so just get it on lsu twitter tomorrow uh, that's a shame that's a shame so what year is this for you as far as uh covering lsu football I started Channel 9 in March of 2001, uh, so that's 23 years. Yeah. Before that, I spent two, two years in Alexandria at KLAX, um, and then I was an intern for two years at Lafayette, where they let me do a lot of stuff at uh, KLFY, so I guess, uh, you know, 27 years wow. or thereabouts of covering it in some capacity, yeah. So in 27 years, is this uh... – are you able to forecast and prognosticate and tell us exactly what's going to happen now before the year starts? Yeah, Mr. Horn, I'm never really that good <laughs> at picking stuff. You know, I, uh, the great Jay Grimes, who's re, who's retiring with us, I always say, you know, I tell the, I get people to score after it happened, not before, you know. So uh, the weather guys, they got to pick that stuff in advance, but, you know, I, I think in 2022, when LSU made the SEC championship game, uh, they won two huge games at home against Ole Miss and Alabama. And LSU has both of those games at home this year. Last year, they were both on the road. They lost them. But LSU does not play Texas. They do not play Georgia. Uh, you know, their non-conference is certainly a little more difficult than a lot of other people's with USC and UCLA. 
I think overall, when you look at it, it's hard for me to imagine the LSU offense being better than they were a year ago. And it's hard for me to imagine the LSU defense being worse. So uh, I think Garrett Mus- Nussmeyer will do a, a, a solid job. I think he'll put up big numbers. At the same time, he's not throwing to Malik Neighbors and he's not throwing to Brian Thomas Jr. I, I know that uh, you know C.J. Daniels, they feel pretty highly about him. They think they'll, he'll translate to Liberty. And Xavier Thomas obviously got the first team all SEC uh, – as a kick returner and as a return guy, we'll see how D-Tac factors in. And then, you know, Tyron Lacey, there are a lot of people saying, get that guy off the field earlier, earlier in the year last year when he was dropping a lot of passes. Now they're saying, oh, he could be the next first rounder. So we'll see if that transpires. And then Chris Hilton Jr. obviously is, uh, finished the game, finished last season very well in that bowl game, but he's, you know, uh, been inconsistent with injuries and some other stuff. So, you know, I, I, I think that this team is, uh, you know, I, I think it's, I want to lean more. I don't be negative, Nancy, but I want to lean more towards that that eight win mark than that nine nine and a half that I saw from another Vegas prognostication. But I do think if they win, if they go ten and two, they'll make the twelve team playoff. If it's nine and three, I think it gets a little more murky. Jock, what do you think about? You know, I hate to be a little, you know, esoteric or, you know, what's the word, ethereal? Well, I can't even speak today. We've had a rough rough day technology-wise, and it's kind of That's shaking okay. me I up been, a little bit. But I haven't been sleeping well either, so, you know, it's all good. <laughs> so. Well, have you been hydrating? That's the big question. I mean, you know, Thursday is going to be hot as, you know, what? So, but the, do you... Do you think that, you know, traditionally it's the third year for Brian Kelly, everywhere he's been has been a big, you know, the big the big year where everything sort of comes together. And he, you know, talked at SEC Media Days, as I know you know, about accountability and all that coming together. And then when you combine that with, you know, Blake's defense supposedly being more aggressive – so you're going to have a more aggressive, more accountable team. Do you, do you buy into that? Do you, do you believe those those things are going to come together? Yeah, I mean, it's that, it's that thing where you go to SEC media days and you have some bullet points as a head coach that you talk about and you play up the positive and whatnot. I mean, certainly you don't, you don't go to these things saying, oh, you know, I think we're pretty mediocre. I think we're pretty meh. You know, <laughs> if we go 75, I'll be happy. You know, so <laughs> he's, been, he's been talking that up. Yeah, he, he said that this is the most – personally accountable team that he's had in terms of the players taking control and being accountable. He, he pointed to Garrett Nussmeyer in that regard, saying that Garrett's not afraid to, um, you know, correct the teammate in front of everybody else and, and get him on the right path and whatnot. I, I think he said something along the lines of maybe the star power uh, top to bottom won't be what it was a year ago in terms of, you know, three first round draft picks and a Heisman Trophy winner, but maybe the totality of the team will be the best that he's had since he's, He's been here now. Look, the offensive line I think is going to be it's going to lead the way for these guys. Uh, you know, certainly Will Campbell and Emory Jones were on a uh, preseason watch list today. I think that was the uh, the the, the Outland Trophy. I think for Correct. best interior lineman in the country. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, so you got those guys leading the way up front there on the on the offensive line. You got some great leaders. I uh, just this defensive line situation. You just wonder if it's something that uh, they can't coach around, or it, are we kind of been, you know, chicken little and uh, maybe overplaying the problem. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that they, you know, they're trying to play up JBR Suggs and saying that he's just as good, if not better, than the two guys they missed in the portal and yeah. coming out of Grand Valley State and all that. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. You have a – I don't want to say it's a, a, a pessimistic view, Jacques, but I think a lot of people are feeling a, a, a 10 or 9 win season. So, you, But you, you think – you could see eight wins for – you know, this this becoming an eight-win team. And I, I would imagine a lot of it is you're just not sold. Yeah, they've, they've changed the entire defensive staff, but it's it's all the same players. And as you mentioned, you're counting on a Division two guy to play defensive tackle. Um you, you tried Harold Perkins at inside linebacker last year. You saw it didn't work. What's the difference this time around? Other than he added some weight in a new defensive coordinator. And I, I guess those are two big changes. But still, there's it's hard to see this defense making a huge jump. That's what it seems like. In uh, I'm, I'm gauging from you. Yeah, and you know, Geo Bez from Wisconsin, uh, defensive lineman. I mean, I think he's a big question mark as well. Now, you know, hopefully it all comes together. I was chatting with Kevin Falk the other day and. 
certainly he, he told me, he goes, look, Blake Baker is going to find a way to utilize Harold Burton. You don't worry about that. So uh, I'm sure LSU fans will all love to see that and see that come to fruition and, and whatnot. But my thing is, watching that team last year, and you watch Jay Daniels and what he did, and it's like, okay, is this team a couple of plays away from being 11-1, and one, or are they you know, a few plays away from being like 6-6 you know, six and six or 5-7? and seven? Because, I mean, how many games last year was it Jay Daniels and company had to keep the foot on the on the metal to outscore people and, to, and take it to the finish line? I mean, Arkansas, Texas A&M, Florida, uh, I mean, you go on and on. So, um, yeah, I mean, this time of year, hope, hope springs eternal. I always tell the story. I think it was 1992. I wrote a letter to Tiger Rag Magazine saying that the uh, that the, I was a, I was in high school writing how the uh, all the authors are being way too negative and cynical and be positive, and that team went two and nine, and they were the worst team in LSU history. So uh, there's something to do with your heart and your head. But um, I, I just I'm, I, it, it's an interesting group. I'll, I'll just say that it's an interesting group and. Uh, I'll be very happy if they make the playoff and winning a lot of games, and we're there to cover it. I'm just, I'm just not sure. How important do you think that first game against USC is? You know, I, I think it's important for the simple fact that they've just lost so many. And I think I was chatting to Ronnie Rance the other day, and I said, uh, you know, they hadn't won a season opener since Joe Burrow was the quarterback. <laughs> you know, uh, is that right? You know, it's like kind of hit him. You know, it's like, yeah, it was at Georgia Southern and Tiger Stadium when they won that year. So. Um, it's been that long, and so I just think that's just been kind of building and just kind of this opening behind the eight ball situation. And I, I, I think it's pretty big in the fact that it's another one of these. The whole nation will be watching Sunday night game. Uh, you know, huge audience for LSU's perspective. They get a five million dollar check. I think they get a hundred free hotels for two nights as well. And it's a big deal, and uh, it's just a, a game that has not worked out for them, whether they get an extra point block two years ago and then get run out of the stadium in Orlando last year. So, uh, And I think it's a big deal, too, because of the two head coaches. I mean, obviously, Lincoln Riley was linked to the LSU job before Brian Kelly took it, and, and so that'll be a, a big thing. I don't think Brian Kelly really cares about that kind of stuff, to be honest. But, um, you know, I think U, uh, USC uh, was, was, was 8-5 last year, so they, right. they need to – they need, to, they need to bounce back. They, they, they didn't have much defense either. So uh, I know a lot of crazy Cajuns are going to be going to Las Vegas and you know having a good time. So uh, I know they don't want to come home uh, with another 0-1 start uh, this year, especially that non-conference schedule and your, your SEC uh, games coming up. Jacques, um, Garrett Nussmeyer, what, what do you, how do you feel about him and as far as what we can expect from him this season? I think he's saying and doing all the right things. I think the fact that he's the son of a coach, uh, you know, a big-time coach, a guy who's coached in the NFL and college and whatnot, I think keeps him hum- humble, keeps him with the right attitude. I don't think Garrett ever really strays into the, uh, you know, the, the social media stuff that he shouldn't touch. I think he's pretty uh, grounded. Uh, got a chance to visit with him, I guess, twice. We saw him at the Manning Passing Academy in late June and then at SEC Media Days. I think what Brian Kelly said at SEC Media Days is kind of funny and accurate. He said, well, when you're the backup, it's a rental. It's not your car. It's a rental. And if I get a scratch on it or whatever, who cares? It's not my car. And now uh, I have laughed because I think he said, well, maybe you guys care about that because nobody else in the room makes $10 million a year and could scratch a, a car rental with his less anxiety as <laughs> is Brian Kelly. But, uh, you know, I think that there's some truth to that now that it's, it's his car. And, uh, and when you're the backup, too, you press. You try to you make play. Try to make plays. I think if you might remember that game when they played against Southern in 2022, where he was he was pressed and he threw the ball underhanded and it ended up being like a 90 yard pick six. Well, when you're the starter and maybe you don't feel like you have to press as much, um, you know, I think that 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 serves you well. I, you know, we've only really really seen him play. He's only started one game, start to finish, and that was the Wisconsin game. And I think the fact that they were 98 yards away, they needed a drive to win the game, and he delivered it. And, and the guys he was throwing the ball to in that final drive are all guys. I mean, I know he threw the touchdown to Brian Thomas to win the game, but the other guys, he threw to Connor Lacey, he threw to Mason Taylor, the tight end, he threw a 44-yarder to Chris Hilton Jr. So if LSU can continue on that, you know, fans fans will be happy. But he's just, you know, he's, he can run around a little bit. He's got some, uh, you know, Johnny Manziel in him, but, yeah. you know, uh, he's not going <laughs> to – no one ever again is going to run for 80 yards and a touchdown like Jaden Daniels. No, I don't think. no. So, 
uh, that's the difference. Jacques, thanks a lot, man. We appreciate it. Uh, hydrate, get ready. Uh, it's going to be a hot month here coming up covering training camp, but uh, we look forward to it and uh, look forward to what uh, WAFB has to offer as far as coverage of uh, LSU football. Well, real quick, I don't know if you looked at that practice schedule, but I know how much you need to hydrate when it's only like 15, 10 minutes practice. <laughs> you can it's, just a, watch. it's just a walk from the car, man. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's 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 the tale of the old politician in year one who who won us all over with forty five minute you know yeah. availabilities that, that that that's been that's been narrowed quite a bit. So it has appreciate been. you having me on. Back here on Tiger Rag Radio, Jeff Palermo along with Tiger Rag editor Todd Horn joining us now on the Max Home Hotline. It's Glenn West who covers the LSU Tigers for Go Twenty Four Seven. Glenn, how you doing tonight on the eve of uh, reporting for preseason camp? Doing well, guys. Uh, getting ready for camp on Thursday, and uh, couldn't be more excited yep. after a pretty, pretty, <clears throat> pretty busy summer of trying to figure out what to write about. <laughs> hey, Glenn, are you? Are you- uh, all right, this is sort of like a, a mind check here. Are, are you buying all of Kelly's preseason optimism and everything sunshine and rainbows, butterfly kisses, or are you remembering back and having a little PTSD as it, you know about how good the defense was last year heading into Florida State? What's your take? Yeah, it's yeah, it's hard not to have a little PTSD about the last de- about the defense last year, and you know, I I think you could probably make the argument that at least from a personnel standpoint, uh, you know, that how how much better are they? You know, like I mean, they, I think you lost a lot of your interior depth at defensive line. Um, you know, you didn't really replace it with a whole ton of guys that you know have experience and in playing time. I think what they're hoping on is this defensive staff and the uh, development that they've been able to pump into these players over the off season uh, can really carry through and help LSU uh, start to show some improvement on that side of the ball. Um, but you know, that's the defense is the first place I'm walking to on Thursday and just trying to get a feel for who's out there, who seems to be doing well, who seems to be uh, going through individual drills the, the right way. And uh, yeah, there's there's still a lot of concern though on my end in terms of who you're going to be relying on at cornerback, who you're going to rely on at defensive tackle, and um, even, a, even a position like safety. that you know They have some new players in there and some guys that have moved back there uh, that weren't previously in the deep part of the field. So uh, it's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of mixing and matching and a lot of trying to figure out what, what they're going to do with that uh, on that side of the ball. When it comes to the defense this year, how you know obviously we know the talent. You know, they lost three three NFL draft picks in the interior line, which you were just, you know, defensive line, which you were just alluding to. And, and they don't have that much talent influx anywhere on the defense, really, you know, as far as transfers uh, that are going to be contributing that much. I don't want to downplay Paez or, or, you know, Suggs, but um, they weren't who they were looking for originally. Um, But what, what do you think about this problem that the defense apparently had with Matt House and the coaching staff last year? Do you think that that Baker being able to remedy that situation, if he's able to remedy it, is going to go a long way in improving the just the overall play of the defense because they have a better attitude, better communication? Yeah. I think that'll be part of it. And, you know, look, everything that we've heard, you know, and, and seen, you know, from Blake Baker, from this defensive staff, you know, these, these players appear to be pretty engaged and uh, with, with what they're being taught, with what they're being told to do. Um, you know, I, I think there's just sometimes you just need change, right? And you just need to breathe some new life on that side of the ball. And, uh, you know, look, things just went so south for LSU last year that I, I if I was an 18 to 21 year old, player i think it'd be hard to concentrate you know if we're constantly having these uh issues on that side of the ball and there doesn't seem to be a, a fix or a remedy uh that, that that helps you know i think you know a lot of these players can sometimes you know start to start to let that get to them and i, I think you certainly saw that at times last year where lsu did not play uh you know very inspiring football on that side of, uh on, on defense so you know i think bringing some new life some new energy some new uh, ideas into this defense, I think is going to be really important. And, 
you know, from everything we've heard, they've adjust, uh, the players have adjusted well to the line of thinking that LSU wants to go do this year. I mean, we've talked to a number of players this off season, and they love the idea of being more aggressive, of playing closer to the line of scrimmage, of being you know in tighter coverage in the secondary and going after the quarterback uh, in the front seven. So uh, I, I think all the things are being said the right way. We just got to wait and see kind of how they piece it together and kind of what they show us on the field here over the next month uh, in, on that side of the ball, I think is going to be really key to how, how they, how they approach these first few games of the season. So let's flip sides of the ball. Let's talk about offense for a second. Jeff and I were having a discussion earlier and he was asking me about, you know, uh, Xavion Thomas. And, and we both talked about how experienced in the SEC and is, is going to, you know, be be very positive for Xavier Thomas, Thomas and his effect on LSU, but I tend to think his his main impact is going to be on the special teams, not so much the offense. Because I actually give Aaron Anderson, uh, you know, a heads up as far as that goes on Thomas. I don't know if that's right. What what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I do think that Xavier is going to be a big part of their punt return game. Um, look, I, I think we've, if any if we've learned anything about the last couple of years at LSU, all, all they really want back there is somebody that can catch the ball, and if he can go make a play, then great. But um, they don't they don't seem to put a two ton of uh, emphasis on being stout in the return game, you know, whether it's kickoffs or punt returns. But maybe Xavier can start to change that line of thinking for him. But I, I do think he's going to be somebody they lean into uh, on, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, this is a guy that, like you mentioned, has SEC experience. I think he had around 600 yards and five touchdowns for an absolutely porous offense last year at Mississippi State. I mean, it's it's hard for anybody to look good in that offense and. I thought he probably looked as good as anybody on that, uh, you know, on that side of the ball last year for Mississippi State. So, you know, I do think that, you know, he's he's got some some good qualities to him. I think they're going to rely on him in the slot. And look, I, I do think that he and, and C.J. Daniels, the other transfer, we're we're starting to see an uptick in their reps with the first team towards the end of spring. And I think that just kind of goes along with the thought that, you know, they're new guys. They had to pick up the system. They had to learn the offense and. Uh, once they were able to kind of start, you know, doing that, I think they they showed that they can be impact players with this group. And so uh, I am looking forward to seeing Xavion and, and certainly, uh, you know, Chris Hilton and Chris uh, and CJ Daniels and Aaron Anderson, some of those other guys that we're hoping can contribute on a consistent basis, but maybe we haven't seen a whole ton of to this point. Are you are you concerned at all with the depth at running back since they had twenty seven thousand yeah. guys in the room last year and now they only have Four. Yeah, they, they go eight to four, so they cut it in half on us uh, in, in you know this season. And I, I do think that look, there's some real question marks there about just having that group stay healthy. And, and look, Josh Williams is a guy who's had some injury problems in the past. You know, Caleb Jackson had a couple of injuries in high school. I know he was pretty healthy last year, but uh, he, he certainly got a little banged up in high school. And uh, you know, look, you're you're, you're going to be relying, I think, a lot on these, 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 those two guys. And then, you know, the freshman, Caden Durham, is going to contribute some. Uh, I could see John Emery sliding back in once he's healthy and, and being a guy that eats up some snaps. But, uh, look, this is a group that, you know, is, is definitely got something to prove, uh, I think, to all of us. I think everyone here is hoping that, uh, you know, Caleb Jackson can take that next step as a second year back and, you know, handle 15 to, you know, 15 or so carries a game and kind of take, you know, that lead dog role in that backfield. But, you know, Josh Williams is going to be a major factor in this group as well. Uh, they love, obviously, what he can do. He does everything well. Like, he does everything right at the running back spot. And even if he's not the most explosive guy on the field, he earned the trust of Brian Kelly and that offensive staff. And you're going to see him a ton this year. So, uh, we'll be interesting to see kind of how they divvy up the reps. You know, I, I'm going to be excited to see Caden Durham, who was a summer enrollee. I think he's got a chance to be a really special player. But uh, really, I think all eyes should be on Caleb Jackson and just kind of what kind of development he's made here in year two. What about the uh, the strength of this team? Certainly the strength of the offense, the offensive line. Any concerns about them having to convert more to a, a traditional run-blocking uh offense offensive line where they're not going to have you know Jaden Daniels pumping out 1100 plus yards rushing and yeah. and they lost Logan Dix too so yeah you know that's, that's yeah. a lot 
Oh, I mean, I think the thing that Jaden did so well last year, too, was he was able to escape in the pocket like no other. I mean, if if he was looking like he was about to get sacked, he would dart for 10, 15 yards or extend plays and throw it downfield. So I'm not saying Nuss can't extend plays, but it's certainly not his, you know, his wheelhouse to to do so. So uh, I think there is going to be, you know, a, a lot more eyes and a lot more focus here on the offensive line trying to, uh, you know, kind of divvy up the, the offensive responsibilities. It sounds like they want to be more balanced between the run and the pass this year. They've you know, incorporated some outside zone schemes uh, in this off season, uh, which should help, you know, in terms of getting guys to the perimeter and uh, trying to open things up offensively that way. So they're going to lean heavily on these offensive tackles for sure. I mean, Will Campbell and Emory Jones are going to be guys you're going to see a lot of and could be you know first round picks next year so they they love those offensive linemen and they're going to lean into that group glenn thanks a lot for your time man we really appreciate it thanks for uh, your thoughts on uh, this season should be fun uh we appreciate yep. it see you out on the practice field looking forward to it guys hi i'm mike munnelin and we're here to smash the capital city's trash Smash My Trash is a revolutionary compactor for large dumpsters, sometimes reducing the volume of waste by up to 70%. This means fewer hauls per month and big savings for your business. Fewer hauls and compacted waste will also result in a positive impact on our community and our environment by taking up less space in our local landfill sites. Schedule your company's free demo today. Call 225-497-0101. Well, that'll be it for today's episode. Thank you, Jeff, Todd, and our guests for the discussion and insight. We'll be back later this week, but until then, stay tuned to TigerRag.com for all your latest LSU sports news.